Okay, well, I mean, this is me stalling because Chanel doesn't do well with thrillers. Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome to my reaction and commentary channel here on the YouTube, the channel of mine and yours, my, my dreams and your dreams. So good to have you here today. This is the channel where we watch movies together like we're friends. I let you know what's going on in my brain as I'm watching these movies. I like to call out filmmakery things, fun shots, cool color, script choices, music choices. And then when all is said and done, we wrap it up. I give you what I thought about the movie and we look up some IMDb movie trivia together because I'm a fact checker. You know, I like to, I like to check myself. And I like to answer all the questions, or most of the questions, that came up during my watch. And if I can't answer them, I usually turn to you guys because y'all got the facts. Seriously. Like, I've learned so much from you guys and the commenters. So thank you so much for that. Today's video is another installment of my holiday watches, if you will. Um, today's video is die hard, you guys. I, I don't fully understand why people say this is a Christmas movie, but I think I'll find out soon enough. I'm gonna get the IMDb up now because I just wanna know the year. All right, Die Hard. I avoided this one last Christmas because I quite famously don't love action movies. I like them if the story is there. So I think Die Hard, I think the story will be there. My nervousness comes from the fact that I have very low comprehension when an action sequence starts and the quick cuts happen. I tend to not really know what's going on. And then I check out and then I check back in and I need some character, some exposition to be like, here's what happened. This guy lost, this guy won. If it's not super clear to me, I'm gonna check out. I feel vulnerable. I feel like I'm in a vulnerable state today. But hey, a lot of people love Die Hard. I'm sure it's great. I'm infinitely curious to find out why people are calling this a Christmas movie. Is it like Gremlins where it just happens around Christmas? I'll I buy into that. Yeah, that's probably right. Also, like part of me is like, is this a big joke? Like, are you guys laughing at me? Like, do you guys like suggest this to reactors and be like, it's a Christmas movie and then laugh at them when they're like, what? <laughs> I always think I'm being tricked, you guys. Trauma. I don't want to drag this out any longer. On that note, let's get right into today's watch, which is Die Hard from 1988. Ah. I have my thinking cap like on. Please let me get it. Get where you're going, take off your shoes and your socks. Then you walk around on the rug barefoot and make fists with your toes. This with your toes. It's okay, I'm a cop. Hey, Air Marshal John, want to get in that restroom and not rest? Name that movie. Have a very Merry Christmas. I heard Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas movie. Die hard. Die hard. You're gonna die hard. You're a die hard fan. Hey, Holly. What about dinner tonight, huh? <laughs> hey, Holly. What about dinner tonight? Thanks a lot, Mr. De Niro. Do you think the baby can handle a little sip? That baby's ready to tend bar. I think the baby can handle a little sip. Dead. Did Mr. McLean call? No. Well, he probably just didn't have time before his flight. Um, it might be a good idea to make up the spare bedroom just in case. Classic, classic, absent dad. Bruce Willis with hair is really throwing me. I'm like, where's bald Bruce Willis? Is he checking out other women? Hey, I'm John McClane. Oh God, I'm your limo driver. Why is he acting so judgmental? Meaning you still live in New York. You always ask us many questions, Argyle. Sorry, man. I used to drive a cab. Every Uber driver I've ever had ever. You're very fast, Argyle. So why didn't you come? Gorgeous. Well? In L.A. winter. In other words, you thought she wasn't going to make it out here, and she'd come crawling up back to you. So why bother to pack, right? <laughs> like I said, you're very 
damn, Argyle, damn. Argyle got a lot to say. Any Christmas music? This is Christmas music. Yeah, don't you hear the sleigh bells, bro? This is fun. I'm having a great time. So if it doesn't work out, man, you got a place to stay? I'll find a place. Where is he? I'm here to see Holly McLean. Just type it in there. Not a hotel. Office building. Made a name? Love that. Take the express elevator. Get off where you hear the noise. Thanks. Not very helpful. Get off where you hear the noise. What floor is that? I have so much anxiety. Wow, this is so tentative. What am I waiting for? The camera angles are like surveillance. You know, look at that. It's like scary. Like what's about to go down? <laughs> no. I was just making a call. Dead. No. <gasps> oh shit. <laughs> Is she happy to see him? John. Hmm? I don't know. Well, go on, show him. What are you embarrassed? It's just a small token of appreciation for all her hard work. It's a Rolex. Oh. Sure Beard needs to take several seats. He's a lot for me. Why don't we make it easy? I have a spare bedroom. I mean, it's not huge or anything, but kids would love to have it. Go, John. Sorry. <laughs> this is a slopopotamus office. So sloppy. Office Christmas parties are scary. I missed you. She does miss him. I guess you didn't miss my name, though, huh? <gasps> Except maybe when you're signing checks. Damn. What's your idea of our marriage should be? It's generic. Damn, another person stumbling in. I hear ominous music. Worthy, right? <laughs> Two points. Damn. Just like that? Also, what is this gun? The sound was not a bullet. It was like a like a laser gun. The sound effect they used. No, that's a real gun. That's that's a real gun. Never mind. That's a real gun. Alan Rickman. Oh my god, he looks so young. <gasps> he just Trojan horsed their way in. Okay. I like it. We love hacker hands. A lot of rings, a lot of watches. That is a cool mother. slide. Wow. <laughs> he did it. He pulled his shoes and socks off. Arga? Back here? Hello? I'm stressed. This is gonna be like a hostage scenario, right? I think that's my vibe. That's the vibes I'm getting. Who knows what they think they're getting? Cash? Booze? Oh, the to the hookup couple. I was like, why is she naked? <laughs> I'm so stupid. This shit looks like the Rainforest Cafe, right? <laughs> That was such a vibe. Horrible pizza. Terrible. <laughs> Yo, Argyle in the garage is gonna come through somehow. I can't wait. Come on, I wanna hear Rickman speak. I wanna hear this velvety smooth voice. It's a pleasure to meet you. Missile, did I say? Does that say missile? must intrude and my associate here has some questions for you i thought he was doing his british accent british english but i feel like it's um german Takagi, i'm really not interested in your computer okay okay what do we want i am interested in the 640 million dollars in negotiable bearer bonds that you have locked in your vault okay money bonds who said we were terrorists you're exhibiting the classic signs of being a terrorist. Are you just gonna have to kill me? Okay. 
Tell me you heard the shots. You're calling the police right now. Of course I'm still coming by later. Sweetheart of Argyle, I'm dead. Argyle's chilling. <laughs> They keep playing variations of Joy to the World. No, Ode to Joy. You'd be dead too, asshole. Think, God damn it, think. I like the way he talks to himself. It's lovely. I do that too. Think, Shan, think. We've got a fire alarm. Call 911. We've got a fire alarm. Get it, get it, John. Uh. <laughs> I love him. I love him. Uh-oh. <sighs> Classic. Classic fake out. I love being tricked. Keep tricking me. Drop it, dickhead. It's the police. Yes. 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 Usually not psyched to see the cops, but I'm very happy to see him. It's intense. My heart rate feels high. Stressed. I'm the only terrorist in the world, and I gotta kill one with feet smaller than my sister. <laughs> Not a joke I thought I'd be laughing at today, but here we are. We have left nothing to chance. Now I have a machine gun. <laughs> oh, yes, Bruce Willis is saying, Now I have a machine gun. Christmas movie. I don't want the hostages to think too much. Hmm. Why would he need the names? Maybe just to use it later, so he's writing them down. Boobs. John. Tell that to Takagi. Hmm. She has faith in John still. I love it. Terrorists six or more armed with automatic weapons at Nakatomi Plaza, Century City. This channel is reserved for emergency calls only. The f is lady, do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? <laughs> do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna rest the game right now. I love this. A little bit of calm, maybe comedic relief. I thought you guys just ate donuts. <laughs> Oh, I don't like fans. Fans are so scary. When you have long hair, you're really afraid of fans. Girls. That checkpoint, man. That's too funny. <laughs> I love it. It's like giving my brain an anchor point, which I very much appreciate. Like, where are we? It's a new hallway. Nope, we've been here before. Girls. Wow, I mean, the peril in this just feels really, really real and like very intense for me. And I'm like, is it because it's like in real time? Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. <laughs> yes, let's get this guy. Let's get Blondie. I hope silly cop is okay. I don't want him to die. <laughs> Please don't die. You have a pregnant wife. Hey, stop it! Put the gun down! Put the gun down! Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Kill him. Next time you have a chance to kill someone, don't hesitate. Thanks for the advice. <laughs> Next time you have the chance to kill someone, don't hesitate. Dun, da, dun, delightful. Come on, come on, come on, cop. Check another chair. Check a chair out the window. Something. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal, is going in the notebook. Okay, silly cop's okay. He's fine. I need backup assistance now! Now, goddammit, now! 
few. Yes. Turn it into a party. Let them fumble about outside and stay calm. This is simply the beginning. Eh, sorry, Hans, wrong guess. Would you like to go for double jeopardy where the scores can really change? Just another American who saw too many movies as a child. <laughs> to culture who thinks he's John Wayne, Rambo. I was always kind of partial to Roy Rogers, actually. Mm, he's a modern, a modern Rambo. The Lone Ranger, the Lone Wolf. It's a new kind of cowboy flick. If the person who radioed for help on this channel can hear me, acknowledge this transmission. Come on, John. Listen fast. This is a party line. The neighbor's got itchy trigger fingers. All right, here's the deal. Party line, itchy trigger fingers. Love it. Great dialogue. Love this dialogue. Could be some improv. I don't know. Yeah, missiles, automatic weapons, and enough plastic explosives to orbit Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get down to nine now. A Schwarzenegger reference. Dead. So what do I call you? Call me... Grinch. Roy. Santa. Well, Roy. <laughs> I wanted a Christmas reference. That would have been so funny. Powell, has it occurred to you he could be one of the terrorists pulling your chain? Oh, yes. All right. This really throws a wrench into it. Oh, no. TV. They need a story. I have a request. What idiot put you in charge? You did. When you murdered my boss. What idiot made you the boss? You did. I think the dialogue is Go the star on. here. Kage chose his people well, Mrs. Gennaro. Miss Gennaro. Smooth. Uh, I love it. Al, you still with me, babe? What's going on? I'm here, Roy. But I'm kind of busy right now. I'll talk to you later. Yes, Argyle, get it. Let's go. Just like max tension, max drama in one place. It's crafted very beautifully. These terrorists think they're gonna just get their bonds and then walk out the front door. What's the long game here, friends? The four assholes coming in the rear in standard two by two cover formation. <laughs> two by two cover formation. <laughs> Got him. Oh, God. Glad to see that's coming back. It's a real botched operation. Oh, man. Uh... Oh, I love it. He used what he got, what he collected. Geronimo, motherfucker. Geronimo. Oh, that looks bad. Oh, that looks bad. What was that? That was me. Explosive I told you about? Yeah. Is the building on fire? No, but it's gonna need a paint job and a load of screen doors. Now, we do not want your help. Is that clear? We don't want your help. Oh, this is East Coast, West Coast, Turf War. This is Deputy Chief of Police Dwayne T. Robinson, and I am in charge of this situation. Dwayne. I'm not the one who just got butt on national TV, Dwayne. <laughs> hey, Roy, how you feeling? Pretty unappreciated, Al. I love you. So do a lot of the other guys. Pretty unappreciated, Al. Mr. Cocaine, chill. What does he want? It's not what I want, it's what I can give you. Negotiation time, beard. Let's hear it. Yikes. The confidence. <laughs> hey, business is business. The guy upstairs is f***ing things up, huh? I can give him to you. Oh my god. How about you, cowboy? You got any kids back on? Cowboy. Yeah. Too. Rogue cowboy. Touching cowboy, touching. Or should I call you Mr. McLean? Uh oh. John McLean oh, of shit. the New York Police Department. Hey, John boy. Oh, I hate him. Jesus Christ, LSG, people are gonna kill you. Tell them you don't know me. John, how can you say that after all these years, huh? John. Shoot Ellis. <laughs> 
Did he really pinch him? He is alone, tired, and he hasn't seen diddly squat from anybody down here. Now you're gonna stand there and tell me that he's gonna give a damn about what you do to him if he makes it out of there alive? The following people are to be released from their captors. In Sri Lanka, the nine members of the Asian Dawn. <laughs> wow. Wait, wait a minute, uh, Mr. Gruber. I this is crazy. I, 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 I don't have the authority. I, I can't authorize. Two hours is not enough. Hello? Some wild demands. Do you think they'll even try to do it? Who cares? Oh, okay. He doesn't really care. One more to go, then it's up to you. And you better be right, because it looks like this last one's going to take a miracle. It's Christmas, Theo. It's the time of miracles, so be of good cheer. And Be of good cheer. I'm Dwayne Robinson, LAPD. I'm in charge here. Not anymore. God, the, this dialogue is so, like, suave. Like, what is this influence? Not anymore. <sighs> hey, t they all talk like rogue cowboys. So these are, this is movie dialogue. This is a movie. <laughs> You're one of them. Relax, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. You're one of them. <gasps> oh, he's faking that he's at the party. <gasps> no. Don't you come in here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Forget the roof. Come on. I said forget the roof. I got people all over. Don't get the gun. What about John McClain? He's the reason why we have the information we have up until now. He's also the reason why you're facing seven terrorists instead of 12. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So John McClain never got eyes on. McGruber. What's his name? Gruber? Got invited to the Christmas party by mistake. I'm John McClain. Clay. Bill. Clay. <laughs> now to use a handgun, Bill? No. Time for the real thing, Bill. Oh, these can't at angles. They're telling us it's not okay. It is not okay. Things are not okay. Yeah. Come. <laughs> he knows so it. Cool. He knows it. He knows it. McClain knows it. Didn't feel it. Hopefully he didn't feel it. It's pretty tricky with that accent. You gotta be on fucking TV with that accent. Or in Harry Potter. Count to three. Yeah. <laughs> like you did with Takagi. Oops. Yes. <sighs> no bullets. Thank you. Yes. He's not stupid. Oh. <sighs> Wow, they got the camera on an angle this whole time. Angle, angle, angle. Oh, God. Got him in the kneecaps. Shoot the glass. I like that clarification. I like it. Shoot the glass. Help me out. How many are left? Two, maybe? He's still alive. What? Only John can drive somebody that crazy. <laughs> She's like, I don't know, I was married to him. I'm still married to him. Uh, the feet, too. <sighs> you know we got a pool going on you. What kind of odds am I getting? You don't want to know. Put me down for 20. <laughs> Put me down for 20, I'm good for it. It's so funny. Run over your cap, flip with the car. No, somebody died. I shot a kid. <sighs> okay. 13 years old. Wow. Holy. You know, when you're a rookie, they can teach you everything about being a cop except how to live with a mistake. Whoa. Hmm. The LAPD is not calling the shots down here anymore. Feds? It's the feds. They're ordering the others to cut the building's power. Regular as clock. The circuits that cannot be cut are cut automatically in response to a terrorist incident. There's thousands of people. You have to we go can't. wider. Look, the mayor will Take it out. This is like life and death. Okay, I'll be honest. I don't really understand what happens. He wanted them to cut the power. He was like, yeah, like clockwork, do it. It's gonna go. It's gonna go! 
Oh, that's why they wanted them to cut the power, because it would release the lock. Oh, to Joy, playing again, triumphantly. We've shut them down. We let them sweat for a while, then we give them helicopters. Right up the ass. I want to see Argyle. Let's check back in with Argyle. We got our bonds. Woohoo. Let me figure out what hit them if they're in a body bag. Touch down, we'll blow the roof, then spend a month sifting through the rubble, and by the time they figure out what went wrong, we'll be sitting on a beach. Hmm. Both, they both think their plans are going to go off without a hitch. That's great. <laughs> Yo, pal, you got a minute? I love this relationship. This this relationship via walkie. I'm obsessed. I hope they hug on the ground together. I want you to find my wife. Don't ask me how. By then you'll know how. Uh, John said that he was sorry. Yeah, I got it, John. But you can tell her that yourself. You let me in right now or I call the INS. Comprende? This is the last time these kids are going to have to speak to their parents. Why is this, like, journalist such an egomaniac? What is his story? What are they trying to say there? He's wildly out of line at all times. Oh, sh**. Fuck. Goddamn. John. It's a double cross. This is personal. Uh. Let's fight the old-fashioned way with our fists. Let's fight the old-fashioned way using choreography. You know, your mom and dad are very important people. Got his interview. Oh my god. Oh, that's fucked up of this anchor. How nice to make your acquaintance. Oh, sh well, she's just become his favorite hostage. The media just made it worse. It's real commentary. And John is our lone ranger. He's above the law. He can't trust the law. We can't trust the FBI. He can't trust the media. It's like, trust no one. We only trust John. We love these kinds of heroes. This is wild. Poor oh, ass, please sit down. Sit <laughs> down. Hey! A policeman's wife might come in handy. McLean, I have some news for you. McLean. Uh. McLean's a little tied up. I'm a little busy. Hans. Nothing but a common thief. I am an exceptional thief, Mrs. McLean. And since I'm moving up... That's Mr. Thief to you. <laughs> this black f Saigon! Hey, Slick! I was in junior high. <laughs> yeah, even the FBI is too cocky. The LAPD, too cocky. This bureau, you got a terrorist shooting yeah, I hostage. I see it! left! No left, sucker! No, 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 no. Get up on your side, you assholes! The car's up there! Blow the roof! No one gives a shit about Carl. Blow it up. <laughs> Please don't let me die. Does he really think that's gonna hold? I mean, I guess it has to hold, but he just tied a simple Girl Scout knot around his waist. Oh, ow. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Get it off, get it off. Now, this is where the Girl Scout knot comes in handy because it's nice and loose. Okay, all right, okay. Now, let the hostages out the front door, please. Now it's personal. Now John's gonna go get Holly. 
Oh my god. Is that the FBI down? <laughs> Christmas movie. Yay, Argyle. He's gonna snap into hero mode. I know it. Two. Yes, trap hacker. Trap hacker guy. Okay, Argyle, nice job. Jesus. Hi, honey. How is this a real movie? I just, wow. Wow. Why'd you have to nuke the whole building, huh? It's about ego now. This is just barely about money. When you steal 600 million, they will find you unless they think you're already dead. Oh, that's the plan? To make it seem like I'm already dead? Still the cowboy. Mr. McLean, Americans all alike. Well, this time John Wayne does not walk off into the sunset with Grace Kelly. This Gary Cooper asshole. Pretty good cowboy yourself, Hans. It's Gary Cooper. Oh, yeah. Yippee Kaye, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the sleigh bells. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, let go, bitch. <laughs> Holy mother of god, just let me breathe. Her Rolex. The watch. I hope that's not a hostage. It's the best movie fall in cinema history. Holy shit. Oh god. He got them all. He pinched all of them. I keep saying pinched. Who do I think I am? Haha, <laughs> a detective. Slaughtered is a better word. Slaughtered. No thanks to LAPD. No thanks to the FBI. All my thanks to John McClain. Reunion. <laughs> they know it's each other. It's that recognition. <laughs> Oh my god, he's crying. How did you know? Holly McClain. Hello, Holly. You got yourself a good man. She said McClain. <laughs> Things to answer for, mister. Interfering with police business. Oh my. There's another one. Who did that? <sighs> I have chills. I have chills everywhere. I have chills on my face. Chills in my scalp. <laughs> no, 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 no. This was with me. What are your feelings? Yes, thank God, yes. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Argyle waited and he's gonna take them all. Oh, the weather outside. Style, snazzy. So delightful. <laughs> and since let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Doesn't show signs of stopping. Lights are way down low. <laughs> this song to just end that two-hour massacre that I just watched. <laughs> it's funny. This movie's funny. We're still goodbye. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Die Hard. Die Hard from 1988, guys. <laughs> that was a hoot and a half. Jesus. Whoa. Wow. I hope the reaction stood alone on that one. That was probably the best thriller I've ever seen. I can't think of a better one. I'm trying right now. I like Zero Dark Thirty a lot, but I don't know if I would really consider that a thriller. That's like a political thing. I mean, I don't wanna waste your time here. I just wanna say that, yeah, I don't think I can come up with a thriller that I like better than this. That was absolutely thrilling. So stunning, so scary, had me so on edge. I was actually interested. I was so tense. 
yeah, why was it so tense for me but other ones are so boring? And I think it's the timeline and that like real-time feel. The fact that it seems like everything is going down in that night really freaked me out. And everything was like, oh my God, oh my God, is he going to do it? Is he not going to do it? Because they weren't quick cutting away. They weren't like, like everything felt real time. It wasn't, you know, cut to the next day, cut to the next week, blah, blah, blah. It was like, because everything was minute by minute, you're like panicking with them minute by minute. So that was absolutely thrilling. I get why it's a Christmas movie, I guess, because it happens on Christmas. Very funny. Um, I think I said it a bunch of times on my watch, but the star of that show was that dialogue. This is a snappy, snappy, snappy action movie. I don't watch much of them today, so I'm just like, wow, that dialogue is the star for me. Let's see. Welcome to the party, pal, when he chucks the thing out the window, the body out the window. The rogue cowboy element that we all know and love. Yeah, oh my god, I only wrote down welcome to the party, pal, but the dialogue was amazing in this. It was so fun and funny, so snappy, so witty. It's like sarcastic, it's biting. It's stylized, and that's what makes this fun, I think. And that's what makes it a show. Oh, this was like the greatest show. This is the greatest showman. No, and Bruce Willis is the greatest showman. Yeah, I can get behind that. So, <laughs> who would have thought? I wrote, this is refreshing. This movie's refreshing. He's a rogue cowboy. Ode to Joy was a real element in this. I wrote, this is a girl boss movie. Um, the news anchor thing was so disgusting and I found this to be like a lot about the cockiness of man. I'm trying to think who the most, the closest influence for John McLean would be. And I think that they were very self-aware and they named a bunch of them in the movie. So like he was like Rambo and they were quoting a lot of action stars in this movie. So maybe he's all of them. Yeah. And the other thing is the injuries felt real. Like they felt like, ah, you know, like they weren't like glazed over like anytime someone's knees went out I'm like oh my god there was a point in time where I'm like these terrorists gotta give up like what are they gonna run away with their money up on fire but um then I understood that their intention was to make it look like they died so okay I didn't really have a lot of questions of course I don't know much about pyrotechnics and all that so we can go to the trivia section now the fictional Nakatomi Plaza is the headquarters of 20th Century Fox the company charged itself rent for the use of the then unfinished building. Yeah, bill it to the job. Bill it on the job. Oh my god. Yo, iconic. Um, Bruce Willis's undershirt that went from pure white to black to off. The costume department had 17 undershirts in various stages of degradation on hand for Bruce Willis. So funny. Bruce Willis received a then unheard of $5 million fee. That feels low now. Wow, Bonnie Bedelia said the first thing she thinks of when someone mentions Die Hard is Alan Rickman. The two became friends and had lunch together every day while shooting the movie. She expressed how lovely and gentle Rickman was in real life. Um, Al the fact that we don't have Alan Rickman anymore really gets me. The scene where Bruce Willis and Alan Rickman meet up was unrehearsed to create a greater feeling of spontaneity between the two actors. Wow. Hart Boschner's line, Hans Bubby, was ad-libbed. Alan Rickman's quizzical reaction was genuine. I think there had to have been a little bit of improv in this. It was just too funny. Oh my god, the scene where McLean falls down a shaft was a mistake by the stuntman who was supposed to grab the first vent as it originally was planned. He slipped and continued to fall, but the shot was used anyway. It was edited together with one where McLean grabs the next vent down as he falls. Ugh, yikes. The terrorists were cast for their menacing appearances rather than their nationality. Only a couple of the actors who play the German terrorists are actually German. Much of the script was improvised due to the constant screenplay tweaks that were being made during filming. Wow. That's kind of scary to me. I don't know. Wow, good for them. Improvising a lot of dialogue is can be pretty bad from a plot perspective. From a one-liner zinger perspective, oh my god, yeah. Put the camera on Bruce Willis and just keep him in a tight shot and have him, you know, give you a million. Welcome to the party. Nice of you to show. Like, let, let him run off. Do a fun run, they call it. But, oh my god, when you're improvising the scenes, that's scary to me. The majority of the exterior shots of the building showing explosions were real, full-scale explosions set off in and around the actual building. Terrifying. Terrifying. It's terrifying. 
When John McClane runs through the glass shards in his bare feet after Hans has his men shoot out the glass partitions, Bruce Willis is wearing special rubber shoes designed to look like his own bare feet. Cool. One can see this if looking closely as his feet appear quite unnaturally large in some of the crucial barefoot scenes. Interesting. Bruce Willis's favorite role has always been John McLean. Alan Rickman nearly passed up on the role of Hans Gruber, which ended up being his first film role. He'd only arrived in Hollywood two days earlier and was appalled by the idea of his first role being the villain in an action film. To a degree, Rickman was right to be concerned considering his performance as Hans Gruber was so hailed that the actor had to struggle being typecast as a player of villains for much of his career. He's such a good villain. I wonder if I'm the villain. I think no. I'm Chanel Babyface, remember? Do you guys like my Christmas tree farm candle? It smells like Christmas trees. I went through a lot to get that candle. Oh my God, Jeb Stewart was having difficulty writing the screenplay until he had a near-death experience while driving at night in Los Angeles after a fight with his wife. He was driving behind a truck carrying refrigerators and one of the fridge boxes fell out of the truck. Luckily for him, the box was empty. He realized that if he had died, he wouldn't have been able to apologize to his wife. This inspired him to give clear motivations to John McLean and Holly's characters. They wanted to reunite with each other after having a fight. Thought that was super strong. The character work in this is pretty great. Um, I love that John kind of gives his cop buddy on the ground that, you know, tell my wife this, this, this. It gives it so much heart. And then when they do come together, it's like very, it feels like earned and great. And she changes her last name again. At the suggestion of director John McTiernan, Ludwig van Beethoven's Ode to Joy. We have that written down. Ninth Symphony, fourth movement is the musical theme of the terrorists. Yes. Hans Gruber, the terrorist leader, even hums it at one point in the movie. Yup. The German that the terrorists speak is sometimes grammatically incorrect. I could guess that. This is interesting. Bruce Willis observed in an interview that many of the real police officers he met with to help prepare for the role and who served as technical advisors on the film had a very dark, macabre sense of humor, which he tried to factor into his performance. Yeah, and then it says, ironically, action hero characters are often criticized for joking around in films. Yeah, like telling jokes in dire situations is key for action movies. Any last words? Me going off of the one f funny quip I have. <laughs> Near the end of the film, Hans Gruber mocks John McClane by saying that the conflict wouldn't end like an American Western with Grace Kelly riding off into the sunset with John Wayne. McLean corrects him and says he meets Gary Cooper. The film referenced is High Noon. Yes, another, yup. When I was calling Bruce Willis the cowboy, I was thinking about High Noon and that like loner character that we in America really like. Um, I don't know about other countries, but we have like a long-standing history of doing those loner type movies, you know, like one man against the world movies. The fireball in the elevator shaft was shot with real pyrotechnics using a miniature shaft. The camera speed had to vary over the length of the shot because otherwise the fireball would appear to change speed as it moved up the force perspective model. Firearms used in the film are, as in most action films, real firearms modified to function with blanks. Weapons specialist Michael, Michael Papik hand fabricated some blanks that were so powerful that the standard firearm modifications weren't workable. This is scary. To resolve this and further the exaggerated realism, the sound crew took the appropriate firearms to a firing range in Texas and recorded them being fired with live ammo. Damn. Bruce Willis admits he still gets squeamish whenever he sees the part where his character pulls glass shards out of his foot. <laughs> this is great. Okay. 20th Century Fox. The production company behind the Die Hard franchise formally admitted that Die Hard 1988 was a Christmas movie after stating that it is the greatest Christmas story ever told. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. It happens on Christmas. What else do you want? Oh, wow. Bruce Willis is mainly known for playing a comedic role on TV's Moonlighting at the time. So in the first, oh my God. So he wasn't like action star Bruce Willis yet. Holy shit. Oh my God, guys. Huh. Apparently this role, John McClane was turned down by Robert De Niro, Bobby D. The centerfold that John McClane sees and ultimately uses as a point of reference while navigating his way from the elevator shaft to the air vent is a playboy playmate, Pamela Stein. I love that this fact says McClane uses it as a point of reference. Cause we do too. Ugh. Oh. The film is unusual for action movies of the period in that the hero and villain never get into a fist fight, emphasizing that this is a battle of wits. Yes, it's a battle of words. And that is why the dialogue is the star. I feel like I should start a new thing on my channel where I tell you at the end who I think the star of the movie is. <laughs> like, 
And it can be anything. Yeah, I like that. This, the star of this movie is the dialogue. The star of Indiana Jones is the music. And the star of Forrest Gump is Tom Hanks. <laughs> it's true. Okay, I mean, I have no other questions. That was so much fun. So you've seen my reaction to Die Hard, so definitely let me know what you think of this one. I already know this is a crowd pleaser. I already know this is a fan favorite. You guys have been asking me to do this for like over a year. I was stalling, so sorry for that, but thanks for joining me here today, of course, as always. Um, where were you when you first saw Die Hard? Did you catch it in theaters? Is this your holiday tradition? Do you watch this every year with your family? Yeah, if you want more from me, full-length Patreon information in the description box below. Other ways to support the channel below. Maybe if you like this video, consider subscribing because it totally helps out my channel and helps me make more of these. And on that note, I'm going to go eat. <laughs>